Hello and welcome to my next tutorial. In this tutorial, I will show you how you can make this clay vase in Cine 4D and how you can make procedural material for it in Octane. Okay, so let's get started from making the vase. Just add here one cycle and we want to change it to XZ and just duplicate it like four times by holding control and just dragging it higher. Now we want to add loft here and apply all of the cycles into the loft and it will generate basically transition between one cycle to another. So if we, for example, take this cycle in the middle and scale it, we can just adjust it. But there is still a few things we need to do to make it looks like a vase and not like a cylinder. So in a loft, we want to go to the cups and uncheck the start cup. It will get rid of the top of vase so we can have hole in it. Also, I'll change the display to wireframe so we can see the actual topology here. And let's go back to the object here. In the object, we want to change a few things like, for example, mesh subdivision V and mesh subdivision U. Something just to get um, even quads here. And in here, we want to uncheck the subdivision per segments. That will, this will make sure we have same amount of lines across the object. Basically, if we take the cycle here, and it's a bit lower, we will have a lot of lines here. And if you uncheck the subdivision per segment, we'll have it like so. We can just have more even segments this way later on. Let's actually change a few things here to make it a bit more in the shape of the vase, mm, something like this. And first of all, we can tell we need way more lines. So let's add them like so. This looks good. And let's also change here the scale slightly. Okay. And now we want to add cloud surface and let's apply our loft into it like so. And in a cloud surface, we want to get rid of the subdivision and add thickness. Let's add 10 in this case. Let it actually be five. And next step will be to add subdivision surface and let's apply our cloud surface to subdivision surface. And we can see we have nice rounded edges here, but there's one issue. If I get rid of the scene here, we can see there's a lot of mess uh, at the bottom and there is a way to fix it, of course. In the loft, we want to first of all flip the normals. This will already fix some of the issues and we want to change the caps type here to Delune. This will make a bit weird topology here, but it will works the best. I tried all of them and it just the Delune looks best. Even the regular grid is really bad. So just pick the Delune and if I go here to normal shading, we can see there's still some of this um, weird normal shading. So we can add just a bit of the bevel here with just two segments and it will also um, help us with it. So that's my way of fixing it. And yeah, it already looks great. And what's cool about it is that we can really can get creative with it. For example, make things like this and just make something more interesting like so. And we can always add more cycles to it. So we can, for example, just copy this one and just drag it to the top. And we have now next segment here. And we can just scale it up and make another copy of it and go down to have this nice edge here for our pot, our vase. And we can just mess a lot with it. Let's make sure all of them are now actually in the middle, like so. Let's make something that looks really good. I like simple shapes, so this is what I'm looking for. I will actually scale it up slightly here, like so. This looks fine. And actually, I will add a small edge here as well, like so. And now we'll start creating the octane material for it, which will be procedural. So it will also adapt to all the shapes we will do here. Okay. Let me also enable the backdrop here. Okay, so let's go to create extension C for the octane and octane material. Let's apply it to subdivision surface we have here, which is our vase. And let's double click on it. Let's click at the node editor. And in node editor, we want to click at the material and go to basic, change the material type to universal and BRDF model to GGX energy preserving. Now let's um, go to roughness and change the roughness to 0.5 or 0.4. And in EOR, we want to go with 1.45 or something around 1.4 and 1.5. 
Now let's start making the colors for our base. So let's add octane noise here. Let's add projection and UV transform to it. And in texture projection, we can go with three planar and let's add three planar to make it actually work. And in noise, let's change the type to Voronoi and let's just turn all the way up Omega and octaves. This will generate really cool texture, which is really realistic. And now we can add octane gradient after the three planar here. And let's just create color, which will be the main color of our base. On one end, make it darker and on one end, make it slightly brighter. Now let's select this whole thing and duplicate it. We can also make here a bit more space for later. And let's add mix node here and let's connect it to the texture one and this noise to texture two. And let's change the amount in mix to one. So we can see just the bottom noise that we duplicated. And we want here to make a bit more darker, uh, less saturated, more yellowish color. Like so. We can also change the contrast in noise so we can have a bit more difference here like this. Now let's add octane gradient to amount and let's click at the linear in octane gradient. This will generate sun wave and transform which will be gradient here. And if we change the rotation Z in transform to 90 degree, it will go from top to bottom. Let's disable the cell node now. And you can see the difference now. Right away, I can spot that this gradient needs to be a bit darker. So I will fix it here. And you can also change the scale here. So it's a bit different looking noise here. And let's add mix here after this gradient. Let's connect this gradient to texture one. And to texture two, we want to add octane noise. And let's make here a bit more space again. And let's add octane gradient after the mix. And if we still note the octane gradient here and clamp it, you can see that we can get the gradient mixed with our noise, which looks really cool. Let's disable the cell node. Let's go to the noise and cell node the noise. Let's add projection and transform. Let's change the texture projection to three planar and let's add three planar so it's actually working. And let's cell node the three planar so we can actually see the cell node. Let's scale it up to something like five. And you can use whatever type you want here. I will go, go with chips here. I will disable the cell node and just work with full material preview. This looks really good. You can also mess with the amount in mix texture to get different result, like so. Now let's select this whole thing again, make a bit more space. And now we want to go to roughness and add octane noise here. This is gonna be simple. Just leave the projection as it is. And in transform, you can uncheck the log aspect ratio, slightly scale it. And if you still know it, you can see those lines. Now I will add octane gradient after it and I can adjust it further here till I get the roughness I want. I can also maybe scale it down. Maybe we can change the omega and octave slightly or change even to a different type. This looks great. And now I will add noise to bump. And here I will add transform and projection. I will leave the projection at mesh UV. And in transform, I will uncheck the log aspect ratio and scale it up like so. I will cell note the noise so I can see the difference. I will log back the log aspect ratio and scale it down to get something more like this. I can also change the type so the result will be a bit different depending on the type you used. I think this looks really good. I will actually uncheck the log aspect ratio and scale it up so I get a bit more lines here. And now I will add mix here and connect the lines to the texture one. And to the texture two, I will add another octane noise. And in here, I will change the amount first to one so I can see just this noise here and go with the turbulence type. I will invert it uh, and I will just add a bit more contrast here. This will make those dents in the pot. Now let's add the texture projection and UV transform here. Let's change the texture projection to box and transform, let's scale it up. Now we can adjust it. Maybe add a bit more omega to it so it's a bit more random and that looks good. 
Now let's go to the mix and let's change the amount to 0.5 or just adjust it till it looks fine. Maybe 0.7 in this case looks a bit better. And we have now both all those lines and those small dots here from this noise. We can also scale it down maybe so we can get a bit more smaller dots here. This looks fine. And now I will add another mix here after the mix we have here and connect previous to texture one and to the texture two we want to add this gradient here which is our mask and connect it to the amount and add float texture here and set it to one or higher even 1.5 seems to work here really well and if we zoom in here we can see that we get those lines small dents and the dirt have some bump into it we can actually lower slightly this bump to 1.3 i think and let's go back to previous scale of the image and here in this gradient which is our main color we can add a add node here after it and connect curvature here to texture 2 and let's add octane gradient to it let's make it white for now so we can see what's going on and we want to in curvature we want to change the include object mode to self and let's change the mode to concavity and if we keep adding strength and radius to it change the offset to something different and just mess with it in overall we can even sell node it so we can see the difference we can also invert the normals to get different result and what we're looking for is something like this where we have white on the edges if we disable this little node you can see what i'm talking about and if you go to this gradient we can in this gradient of course clamp slightly those dark uh, grayish colors by moving it we can also do it on the opposite side with the white and if we disable the cell node and change here color to slightly brighter tint of this orange here we can get this really nice result like so and it will be more pronounced if i make here something like this maybe see and maybe we can even add another one here and just scale it slightly let's duplicate it again and let's scale it and you can see those brighter spots and uh, concavities of this object if we get rid of it it's just flat color here it just gives extra detail to a whole look of it and also if we saw note the mix here just after the albedo you can see we have tons of color information in this base so it's really nice way of creating procedural clay material and you can always refine it and adjust it to your object and just make something crazy with it like so it's really fun to play with it and the fact that you can even rotate it like so it's also cool you can create some really abstract shapes here and i think that's it for this tutorial Hope you find it entertaining and you learned something new today. If you like my tutorials, be sure to subscribe. My goal on this channel is to upload one tutorial every week. You can also follow me on the Instagram. And I think that's it. See ya.